Hello everyone, Jose Rodriguez here again, another hot July day in Maryland. I want to show you guys what the channel has achieved as of yesterday. 3,007 subscribers. Let me tell you guys, I had no idea we would even reach maybe 200 total subscribers ever. And this is amazing to me. The faith that you guys have shown this channel is tremendous and the follow in that you guys are giving me is tremendous so i really 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 appreciate it all right let's get on with the subject of this this video a user of a canon pro 10 and i did not find out that's the printer he was using until later on in our conversation was stating that he was getting a consistent greenish tint to his black and white prints this is mostly what he prints and something that's probably not going to be at all noticeable when printing full-blown color images but when printing black and white yeah any change in color balance or tint or hue will be readily and easily detected by the human eye maybe not my human eyes but other people's eyes are a lot better than mine let me quick show you an example of the same black and white image printed by two different printers both of them canons one of them with OEM Ink Pro 1, OEM Profile, Pro Luster from Canon. Precision Colors Inks, Custom Profile, Pro 100 from Canon. They look pretty much the same until you really get up close and you realize that this is a little bit magenta-ish. This is a little bit yellowish. Okay, this one has a bit more contrast in the shadows, a little bit denser. This is a little bit more open. Well, two different printers, two different outputs. And that's very usual. That happens a lot. Um, there is one way to kind of bring that to a more closer relationship. And I'll show you how to do that in another video, but not now. So we'll discuss that down the road sometime. Now, if I just show you this one, you will probably accept that the owner loved it. I gave it to you know, the, the two people in the, co in the picture loved it and they are not photographers so they thought it was wonderful i later showed them this one a day had passed they saw it and they thought they were looking at the same print no they're not they're these are distinctly different in rendition okay same brand printer different outputs okay even if i was using oem inks on the pro 100 there would be slightly different outputs now the person was stating that he was getting greenish tonality in his black and whites. Probably similar to the ones that I'm getting on my, on my Pro 100. He is viewing his prints under a north facing window and also under um, daylight type light or viewing bulbs that are specifically made for viewing photographs. And he gets a greenish tonality. Now this may be one of two things. The profile is producing slightly uh, bias, a slight bias toward green or yellowish green. Or there's a phenomenon called metameric failure, which is a situation where the inks actually physically react to the light hitting it and they change slightly in color. And that's a problem that occurs with some inks, even OEM, but specifically with some papers. And it has to do also with if the papers have optical brightness incorporated in their uh, coating, whether it's the paper base or itself or the actual overall coating on the surface of the paper. Now, papers that are more of the art type usually do not have any OBAs incorporated and they will not suffer from this. But also the inks themselves can suffer from this metameric failure. But the papers, uh, OBAs can also help enhance that, that uh, strange reaction to light. If that is not the case, which may or may not be, and he has a Canon, he can download the Canon Print Shop Pro plugin, install it. I'll stop a minute. If you guys are having trouble installing that plugin so that it is recognized, or you can actually install it later on onto your Photoshop or your Lightroom, 
and you cannot, it tells you that, it's in, that your, your version is not compatible, I will do a video and show you how to solve that problem. Again, so that's two videos coming down the pike that will solve two different problems for you. All right, so if you are able to use PSP, once you load your image into the actual plugin and you select your paper, your quality, your printer, size, layout, uh, your color management uh, choices, you go down to the very, 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 very bottom of it. You may have to use your, your little uh, mouse to move the uh, choices up because it really doesn't show it to you even when you maximize the plugin interface. Very bottom, it's called pattern print. You look that up, open it up, and it will load this, and it will then, you will then print it. Now, in my situation with this particular image, the neutral or the 000 neutral choice is perfect. Had this not been perfect, and one of these others been the one that was perfect, then I would simply load these settings. Plus 10 cyan, plus five magenta, plus five yellow and that would then neutralize my print say this was looking a little bit magenta-ish or a little bit bluish a little bit greenish and so on you find the one that looks perfect if the central one looks perfect then you have no need for the pattern print you can just print perfectly all right so that's what you would do print this out you may have to do it twice because after the first print emerges you may have to do a second one with using more narrow adjustments, very finely uh, tuned adjustments. And you can actually change the proportional changes al along this mosaic of images. And like if this wasn't good enough, you can do that also for your brightness and your contrast. So once you have the color nailed down, you do a third sheet. Say you use two sheets to nail down your color, you use a third sheet to nail down your brightness and contrast. And then you can commit to that 13 by 19 without any problems or any uh, worries about it coming out wrong. And for that particular image, then you can save those settings. And anytime you're gonna go reprint that image and you want it to come out exactly like the one you created earlier, you can just apply those settings. And it's, it's, a, it's a nice little tool that's there for the uh, person who's not really uh, well trained or experienced in color management and there are some people that can look at an image and know immediately what sliders to adjust. But for those of you who could possibly spend hours upon hours making adjustments globally, this is a best tool for you. It'll save you a lot of time and money because you will only use one or two sheets of paper. I think my LED just died. Anyway, we will continue. All right, so that is it. Use this tool, it's very good. I use it once in a while just to uh, make sure that it actually works before I go ahead and start recommending it to people. All right, so I want to leave now with the um, huge thanks to those who view who have made recent donations to PayPal. Really appreciate that. It's been tremendous. And uh, at this point, we are accumulating enough money to uh, make this channel more sustainable by itself. And remember, I told you guys I had to begin once again with a uh, my monetization of my videos through uh, AdSense. And as of yesterday, the 25th, I actually stopped the 24th of July, my partnership with BBTV. And then I went back to uh, AdSense. And that meant that I had to start all over again. I had to re-monetize over 409, I think it was 509 exactly. I said 510, but it's 509 videos had to be re-monetized and began earning money all over again. So yesterday I saw my earnings were $5 and 90 something cents, which is good. So that is what it averages per day. So in a 30 day month, so you multiply that times, times five and that's what you earn and that's good. So I have yet to be able to reinstate my support button. They won't let me do it. So I have to con contact YouTube and see what's up. But that's not so important anymore. I still have Patreon, PayPal, and monetization of the channel. And that should provide enough funds for me to uh, do some of the newer things that are out there. There's a lot of things that I want to test for you guys because everybody keeps asking me different questions about this and that ink. 
in this paper and that paper and so on. So that will help to do that and bring you guys that information so you guys have some, some sort of a, a way to make an intelligent decision as to what is the best uh, product or situation for you individually. After all, the major companies are not clamoring, knocking on my door to send me printers for me to review because they know that I'm not going to be biased. They know that I'm going to be pretty hard and I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. And so I think they're afraid of me. That's why they will not approach me. They know who I am, but they just will not approach me. Okay, everyone. So thank you once again for all of your support. Please subscribe. We're going to keep increasing those numbers. Please share as always. Please like. YouTube loves that. And until the next time, happy printing, guys. Bye-bye.